is focused on innovative solutions to enhance efficiencies and streamline connectivity for healthcare organizations of all sizes. He was just recently nominated the ultimate CEO issued by the South Florida Business Journal last month. And AAJ was named one of the top 50 companies to watch for in Florida. He won the CEO of the year by AEA, which is American Electronics Association, for AAJ, Best Technology Company of the Year, and also Microsoft Excellence Awards. He has a BS in Computer Science from Florida Atlantic University, Advanced Management Training from Northwestern University, which is Kellogg. So please welcome Anjay. Technologies. You're hired. How much money do you want? 
So we hired the guy, but obviously there was no project. He just found us. So what I learned was, you're talking to us. <laughs> but what I learned was, if you're talking to a sales guy, and if his lips are moving, you must be lying. <laughs> but I'm also a sales guy. You know, I was a technologist, and the reason I said, you know, I mean, if you're in sales and marketing, you gotta know, you have to be out there selling. That's what you have to do. I didn't know anything about pipeline or pipeline management, funnel and all of that. And I don't know. I was thinking of drugs when they were talking about all of that kind of stuff, you know, funnels and all of that. But, you know, you learn from that. Now, big mistake we made when we were starting out, and this is what I learned, never do business with your friends. The great guy, we are still friends. He had a dot-com company, and he asked us to do a big project for him. So, okay, let's start working on the project. We're a technology guy. We're working on this project. And then a few months down the road, he said, you know, he's not getting, giving us any money. What's going on? Did we invoice him? You were supposed to invoice him. No, you were supposed to invoice him. And that's, we have a team, $300,000. We went to this guy and said, you know, you owe us some money. He said, oh, man, I ran out of funding. And honest to God, this is what, 15 some years later, he's still paying us $500 a month, sometimes he pays us, sometimes he doesn't. He still owes us $300,000. I'll be dead before I collect that. <laughs> but anyway, so AJ, we learn a lot. We made so many mistakes. I can write a whole book and you can spend a whole day with me and I can go over all the mistakes we made. But you know, we went through it. We, my wife thinks, she thought I was crazy. She still thinks I'm crazy for doing this. You know, long hours, working weekends. But it's something that we created, we are proud of, and actually we created without any VC money. So that was really good and humbling experience. Now, what I'm going to talk about is our second company, which is Jet Health Solution. We started that in 2007 as part of AAJ. And we were talking about, you know, financial project projection and things like that. So First time when we started AJ, AJ it was on the back of the napkin. This time we created spreadsheets, we did all the models, we hired a consultant, we did all the good work that we were supposed to do that we heard in the video. But this is what happened. We started in 2007. We had a customer also who was willing to pilot it. And we said it's going to take us probably three to six months to do this product. And around 300, 400 dollars Okay, we can figure it out, we can do this. So, then 2008 elections, and President Obama was elected, and then the ACA of Obamacare came into play. And all of our customers, so our product is for health insurance companies, our friends, right? And we went to them, for one customer, big customer, you all know them, I can't name them, and they said, we don't need your product anymore because we don't know what's going to help, what's going to happen with the whole healthcare reform. So essentially, go away. Said, okay. Now we started looking at AC. I don't know if you have looked at the 18,000 pages or something. I mean, it's amazing all the laws and everything. And we had to change the product to be compliant, combined with the new rules and regulation. So we started then, and we got our first customer this January. No one wanted to buy it until last year after the second election. So we did our planning, so it's going to happen. You can do all of your planning and everything, but things could go wrong. But what I tell you is that, let me just ask this question. How much do you think we spent? The initial was three to four hundred thousand dollars, maybe five hundred thousand dollars. How much do you think we put in that? Anyone wants to guess? In that product? Million dollars. Two million. Yeah. Close. Over four million so far. So that's why my wife thinks I'm crazy because I have nothing else. I'm gonna ask you guys for food now. <laughs> but you know, it's uh, so we, my point is you can do all the planning that you can, there are things you can't control, and this will happen from time to time. The good thing is that we didn't have money, I don't know if it's good or not, I wish it would be C money instead of my money going in there, but uh, anyway, now we have customers who are lining up because we're one of the only companies who have some, you know, this kind of technology. So, one thing I learned about projection is that you have to run different models. You can't be, if you're going to go, when I go talk to 
some of these startup companies and they show me projection where they're making all kind of, you know, 1 million, 4 million, 20 million the first year, it doesn't make sense. And the example I can give you is that uh, when we talk about $4 million, I would say $3 million in technology, we're probably going to spend a lot more than that in sales and marketing. So technology, we think, once you build it, that's it, absolutely not. You got to create your brand. You have to create your sales channel. You know, marketing, I didn't know much about it. I still don't know much about marketing. You know, it just, marketing is, I'm spending money, that's all I know. But, you know, it's brand marketing, it's lead generation, it's content, it's all the things that I don't understand. But you need all of those things, and you spend a lot of money on doing all of those things. So, make sure, whatever you are budgeting for sales and marketing, double it or triple it, because you're going to need it. And you're going to be your best salesperson. If you think you can go out and hire the best salesperson, it ain't going to happen. And the reason it's not going to happen is that unless you get VCs who can bring someone in, that's great. If not, you're a new startup company. If I'm one of the best sales guys, why would I want to go work for you? It's not that easy. I've tried it, believe me. It doesn't happen. I get guys like that who, you know, tell me that they're going to give me a $250,000 project and nothing happens. But, you know, you have to be out there knocking on the door. So if you are not comfortable knocking on the door, it's not for you. I mean, people have asked me to leave and I refuse to leave. And, you know, I said, at one time I sat down and said, I'm not leaving and you give me some business because I have to do payroll coming up. You know, so the good guy gave me some work and this is going back many years. But, you know, you got to put aside your ego and say you have to sell. And you have to really learn how to sell and market. I mean, sales is a whole process. How many of you are technologists? Okay, a lot of technology guys. So you know the standard development methodology, software development methodology, right? Sales, you have a methodology also. It has multiple processes. We go through different processes. What questions to ask, what not to ask. And people think, one thing I learned is that instead of wasting my time, now we try to disqualify people as quickly as possible. So you really have to consider the big expense of sales and marketing. It's not about technology. And one other thing, a friend of mine, real estate guy, he bought a technology company for $4 million and then he couldn't sell his product and he came up to me and said, oh, you guys are good, I've heard about you, so why don't you take our product and sell it? All right, I looked at it and um, we looked at that third and uh, what, we rec what we realized was some of the source code was missing from the main module and I said, I was going to name his name, but he said, so and so, what happened? Where is the code? Is no, that's not possible. The guy who was my chief technology officer, he was a, I don't know, a priest or something. You know, he's a religious guy. He can't, he can't do that to me. But, you know, missing all that code, we couldn't find it. And then the other thing we told him was that you're going to have to make, I'll go in and I'll make half a million dollar investment. You make another half a million dollar investment. He said that. Why do you have to make more investment? I already built the product. So that's another thing. People think that once you build the product, you don't have to invest in it. You're going to have to invest more and more. If not, it's the guy behind you who's coming out with a cooler product. So you've got to project for that also. So, and legal. You know, we were talking about legal and, uh, for example, our product, our insurance company found out we are building a product and um, First thing they said was, oh, this is going to cost you another hundred thousand dollar a year in insurance. Because of regulatory compliance, this and that. I have no idea why they're charging all of that. And you know, I don't understand, but those are some of the things you need to look at. And when you talk about patent, I know you guys are working with patent and technology, but I'm sure you've heard of patent trolls also. I know a friend of mine, he has patents, so there are two things. People sue him because they think his pattern is not, whatever it is in legal terms, not right. And then people copy his pattern. So he spent probably a million dollar a year protecting his pattern or going out to talk, you know, swing people. You've got to consider all of those expenses. And, you know, I can go on and go on about all the different expenses that you have to have, but one thing that you have to look at closely is cash. Cash is king. 
when you are cash flow positive and your banker or VC, anyone who wants to give you money, take that money. They're not going to give you money when you really need it. So that's what I did. I took the money and right before 2008, I created a very good relationship with my banker. Get to know your banker. They buy you lunches, buy it, start buying them lunches. She told me, she said, the bank is going to take your line of credit away. So, and you're not using it. I don't need line of credit, but I always maintain it. Take that money because they're going to take it away. I took each and every penny out of line of credit and put it in a different bank. So, <laughs> you know, I want you to be ready for 2008 and what's going to happen. So, the bank couldn't do anything and said, Yeah, I'm going to pay you back. You know, look at my credit. So, I never bounce a check. So, you got to know those people. You know, get to know your bankers, get to know your lawyers, have a good lawyer. And I have three or four lawyers because one lawyer can't do anything, it's less like in technology. <laughs> well, and, you know, lawyers, they have to talk and make money. So, I have one lawyer, the minute I pick up the phone, hello, I have to start counting. Okay, that's $10, $20 every second, it's more now. So, you have to tell all the lawyers. I don't know what I was talking about, but you know what? <laughs> I'm going to open it up for questions also, because I have so many more stories. I should tell them that you guys ask questions. Anyone have any questions? No question. What would you do different? What would I do different? Oh, that's a great question. So this is what I would do different. My favorite book, the book is Good to Great. And um, it talks about having the right people in the right seat. So figuring out what I want to do, but don't do it yet. Make sure I have the right people. Whatever they're good in, I hire them. And then form up my plan. And before I execute it, I make sure I have a plan which, you know, this one guy, he did a plan for three years, but he identified every job as he grew. And in advance, three years in advance, and he sold his company after three years for two hundred million dollars. So that's what I would do differently. Instead of sitting in a waffle house and then throwing away the napkin with our business plan, I would really figure out what I want to do, hire the right people, brainstorm with them, then come up with a plan, and then start executing it. And you know, plans change. Plans always change. I mean, it's funny if you. We have to look at a plan every single day. And I look at two things every single day. One is my cash. No matter what, I have to know. I get up, where we, where do we stand? Our accountant send us reports where we are financially. And the second is we got to look at the plan and see what needs to change. So it's getting disciplined and organized and executing and learn sales. That's it. I know a lot of people didn't raise their hand, but by the end of this program, you should know more about sales and marketing. But that's the key thing. Yes? How do you work critical when you say that you have a product that's successful? Mm -hmm. You have your first product that's successful. Mm -hmm. And you have another product you want to roll out. Is your decision process for that second product the same or is it different from that second product? Well, it's going to be different. I mean, it's uh, every product it is different. The market is different, how you market it is different, how you sell it is different, how you price it is different. And actually what we did was we, we were a little bit ambitious. We tried to start out with two or three products and we invested money in three products at one time. And after probably a year or so, we said we got to focus on one product. So we shelved those two products that we have and we are focusing on one product selling that one product and then we come on to the second product and the model, the model is really different. You know, one of the things I'm sure you guys know, the latest trend is VC does investing more money in B2B companies. So B2B companies versus B2C, you know, you can sell to the consumer, but how much money are they going to pay you? I don't know. They don't pay you a lot as a consumer. If I go to, and our product is B2B, if I go to an insurance company, Small insurance company will probably pay me thirty, forty thousand dollars a month, so which is good. All I need is 20, 30 customers, and I'm in a few million dollars range right away. Versus, it's going to take me a lot of customers. 
So your strategy for B2B versus B2C is entirely different. And it's a different business model for Did I answer your question? Okay, uh, Ron Hermans with my system. My question is regarding uh, app development. I mean, I'm not sure what AAJ technology does have with them, but uh, what's your experience with outsourcing the entire application development process versus bringing an internal sheet of information office to try to do that? Right, as I look at those two models like that, uh, how much time do you have? <laughs> that's the source of that good video, but that's what we do. There's a problem with software development companies. There is no certification, so if you're a doctor or a lawyer, you need a degree, right? So I just came from a meeting talking to a CEO. He has a company in New York, and he told me, Oh, yeah, I hired a chief technology officer. Yeah, he fixes all of my phones. He fixes my mind. A chief technology officer is fixing your phones. That's not a chief technology officer. <laughs> so the problem is that in the software industry, everyone can say, I'm the chief information officer, I'm the chief technology officer, security officer. There is no rule, no governance around it. So if you ask me, I had this conversation this morning with one of the clients. So they're going so fast. The CEO told me, he said, I've lost all control because I'm going so fast. You need to help me. And what I told him was that you need to keep certain disciplines, certain roles within your organization so you can protect your IP, outsource everything else. Because in South Florida, if you're looking for technology, good technology people, they're difficult to find. You can't find them. If they're good, unless you give them a lot of equity and a lot of money, they're not going to come to you. So those roles, that you should keep, one would be a CIO. A CIO should create your IT roadmap and work with the business. Not, your CIO should be your, your, your true technology guy, that's your CTO. And your CTO should be setting up your technology roadmap. And then you, what you, what we are seeing right now is that some of the businesses, they're going with what they call business architects. Not a business analyst, business architects are people who are technology people who understand the business also. And they usually work with outsourcers. See, the problem is you can't compete with outsourcing companies. We are an outsourcing company. We have global offices, right? And we have technologists here also. So in order for a company to hire people here and pay them all the salaries, I mean, this is a global fact, so it's not trying to spend any money. That's the way that you have to keep certain roles here, and the other ones you have to outsource. So those roles are your developers, your software engineers, your QA analysts. Those are the roles that you need to have. It really doesn't work that anymore. Okay, we only have time for one last question. Oh, I got the mic, sorry. <laughs> um, so you're a Microsoft business partner, and I was wondering if you could share, you know, how have you been able to have a successful partnership <coughs> Microsoft, because I think a lot of small companies can start out with a partnership and it doesn't go how they think or they have a lot of expectations. But you know, what has led to uh, your company having a successful relationship with a large multinational such as Microsoft? Uh, that's a good question. It took us a few years and actually it took us hiring someone from Microsoft. And uh, what he told us was, uh, he said, it's not Microsoft, and I know that people from Microsoft here also, it's every vendor. You know, it's partner of the day, what can you do for me? So we thought that, you know, we are Microsoft partner. But if we can help them sell their licenses, you know, it's not a good partner for them. So that's the key. Can you help them sell their licenses? And then they'll bring you in also. So here's the key thing. What we do or we don't do is we can help them sell their licenses only if the customer, we think the customer needs. So if the customer doesn't need their licenses, we don't bring in Microsoft. So if you want to be a good partner with Microsoft, IBM, Oracle, whoever, make sure you're able to bring them into your account and you can help them sell their licenses. And you'll be a great partner. We'll love you for that. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very much.